Hello everyone, it's your boy Mrs. Nesbit and welcome back to Moonlight Drool. As you can tell, today's video is very special because I have some VIP guests. To my right, we have Alex and Barb from Enchantarium. Hello there! And to my left, Diana the Doll Fairy. Hi! The reason why my guests are here? Y'all guessed it right, it's collab time, baby. I finally got my hands on a smart doll and some hats a while back, but I feel everything else but smart to work on her. No worries, we're here to help. And we also conveniently have a smart doll to customize as well. So do I. Collab time. So for the topic of the collab, we decided on making Lolita-themed fashion smart dolls. Lolita fashion is a subculture from Japan that is highly influenced by Victorian clothing and styles from the Rococo period. Many other substyles such as Sailor, Country, Hime, Sweet, Wa, Punk, Shiro, Kuro, Steampunk Lolita and many more also exist. My personal favorite is the Sweet Lolita style, which is why I will be going for a candy-themed Sweet Lolita look. I used to dress up as a Lolita myself in the past, so I'm super stoked to be making a Lolita doll myself now. Smart dots, however, are really, really big and way bigger than I thought, so it will be a challenge to work on her, but I'm super excited. I wanted to start with her face, and for that, Bibi from Moyashi Doll offered me her beautiful face charts that she made for planning out face ups on different smart doll heads. Bibi also makes incredible smart doll clothes, so make sure to check her out. I have a Mirai head, so I will be using this template for my face-up plans. Vivi also has a second business called Foxy Scrunchie, where she sells her handmade beautiful scrunchies. She sent me some of them and the quality is mesmerizing. They are beautiful as hairbands or even as bracelets. Thank you so much Vivi for sending me these. So after sketching out my face-up plans on the template off-camera, I came up with this. It'll be really helpful to have this as a guide for starting the face-up. And here's the faceplate. After spraying her with good old Mr. Super Clear and adding shimmer to the skin, I start by giving her some blushing with my Mungyo hand-rolled pastels. I'm slowly building up the colors and try to be careful not to add too much blushing to the face, since these pastels are super pigmented. Turning the face upside down helps a lot to make things more symmetrical. And a little forehead blushing can't be missing. I also decided to blush her nose a little bit, since it's very small and doesn't have much details to it. Then I take a smaller brush and add some lip blushing as well. Time for the part I was most afraid of, the eyeliner. I've never worked on such an anime aesthetic face up before because I find them difficult to do. The simpler the face, the harder it is actually to make it look good. I really took my time with the lines, especially because they have to be as symmetrical as possible in the end. On the first layer, I'm only using brown shades to sketch out the initial lines. Thanks to MSC, the pencils did have a good grip on the vinyl of the head and drawing on the face was actually really, really nice. Here I already sketched out the initial shape with brown and now go in with black after spraying her with MSC again. I make sure that my pencils are always as sharp as possible, so the fine lines are pointy and sharp. Time for some eyebrows. My favorite part. I start by dusting on some brown pastels and sketch out a rough shape for the brows. With a kneaded eraser, I can erase them in shape easily. And then I take a brown pencil and define the shape and single hairs of the brows a little more. If necessary, I use my brush and eraser again to make them look perfect. After 
After spraying another layer with MSC, I'm just darkening the colors more and more. It's so satisfying to see them becoming more saturated and even. Time for lower lashes. I first sketch out two thicker lower lashes on the side of the eyes. I decided to draw the lashes with pencils only this time, because I wasn't sure if brush strokes would have looked well on a smart doll face. After sketching out the thicker lashes, I continue by drawing the thin lower lashes. I wanted to give the face my own style and it was so much fun. After spraying her another time and adding some yellow eyeshadow, I decided to give her some white heart-shaped cheek marks with white gouache paint. Oh, it looks so cute! I also add two white dots to the eyeliner because I kinda like the look. Now just some gloss is missing. I carefully gloss the lips and also decide to gloss her waterline because it makes the face look more alive. And then I did something that not a lot of people do on smart dolls, I think. I added lashes to the doll face. I wanted to try and see if it looks good and I must say, I like it a lot. It just feels more finished with the lashes. And here's the face all done. I can't wait to make her some eyes. In order to make her eyes, I made a silicone mold from 20mm glass cabochons first. Then I take some UV resin and fill it into a little disposable cup. I'm taking some white resin pigment I got at the Asian marketplace and fill in a few drops to the resin. Then I carefully mix it. I now fill it into the mold and let it cure under the UV lamp for about 4 to 5 minutes. After that I can release the base from the mold. They just need a little cleanup, but turned out very nice. Then I printed out some beautiful iris designs my friend Mizu made for me onto some white self-adhesive vinyl and covered that with some shiny clear vinyl as well to have a glossy finish. I cut them out as neat as possible and simply glue them onto the top of the eye base. I then added some glue to the base and sprinkled a tiny amount of glitter to it to clean up the spilled glitter with a brush. It gives the eyes such a pretty sheen. After it was fully cured, I took some clear UV nail polish and put the final layer onto the eye. I cure it under the UV lamp again and here are the finished eyes. I love how they turned out. Aww. These were actually the second pair I made. The first pair wasn't so popping in color because I used regular paper for the print but the vinyl really made it pop. Also they looked hella wonky because I added too much resin on top. Oops. And here are face and eyes united and I love her face so so much. The eyes work so well with her face. Thank you Mizu for making the design, they are amazing. On to the wig! 
I used the second Mirai hat that I had as a model for the wig and already prepared a wig cap and some baby pink to bright pink gradient hair widths. The process of the wig is similar to every other wig, so now it's time for answering some questions you had from my last video. Bozana Petrovic asked, which suit from your dolls would you like to wear? I think I would love to wear the outfit from my latest Lila repaint because I love that fuzzy jacket so much. Evelyn White asked, where do you shop for your human sized clothes? You're an absolute style icon. Oh, thank you so much. I shop pretty much everywhere, but I especially like to shop secondhand and in thrift stores because you can find really unique pieces. Vivian Wells asked, what got you into doll makeovers? I have watched Nicole Stream's videos back in 2013, 2014 and I always wanted to try it myself. In 2015 I did my very first repaint and got hooked and never stopped. And one more question I have time to answer. Alex K asks, what's your favorite doll you've made so far? Usually every doll that I just finished is my new favorite. But I really love Aldrich, since he was such a different and unique project. But it's hard to decide. I like all my dolls a lot, because I put a little piece of my heart and love into each and every single one. Here you can see that I glued the wefts in a circle and just covered up the glue parts with two parting wefts. Now I can cut her bangs. I usually shorten them step by step to make sure not to make them too short. After that was done, I use my small curling iron and curl the whole wig because it fits the Lolita style very well. This process took quite a while, but it was very worth it in the end. I really love how the wig turned out. Time to make her clothes! The first thing I wanted to make was making a print for the dress. Since I had very limited time due to a very busy schedule, my friend Samantha offered me to make candy themed vector graphics for me and she did such an amazing job. I just had to arrange them to a print for the dress and added a little lace below the print as well. I then printed the design onto white fabric vinyl. I put it into the Cricut of my dad's company and cut it out. Now I just had to remove the excess vinyl and I had a perfectly cut print ready to be ironed onto the fabric. I also cut out the white lace with a Cricut from a white fabric vinyl. I then put the fabric and the print onto the iron press of my dad and ironed everything onto the fabric. First I ironed on the lace and then the candy print. And here it is completely ironed on. Now we can start sewing the dress. I start with the top and first sew the side darts. I used a pattern from DG Requiem this time that I altered to fit my vision. After the side darts were sewn and ironed flat, I sew the other darts that go from the waist to the chest. Looks about right so far. Then I made a little bow pattern as a decor for the pinafore and just cut little scissor snaps into the seam allowance and glue around the bows. Mm -hmm. 
This is how it looked when it was done. Then I take the bodice and attach the decorative piece to the front. Looks good! I then cut and glued around the seam allowance of the front piece and placed and hemmed the pinafore piece underneath. Now I just attached the back piece of the bodice to the shoulders first, sewing it finished sides in. This is what it looks so far after ironing everything nicely. Then I take the collar and also cut and glue around the seam allowance like on the pinafore detail. And done! Then I take the bodice and sew on the collar, finished side to unfinished side. I cut the seam allowance short and iron and glue the collar in place afterwards. Then I take two little sleeve cuffs and also glue around the lower seam allowance here. I already gathered the lower part of the sleeves and sew on the sleeves cuffs, finished sides inwards. I iron it flat and gather the top part of the sleeve as well. Then I pin it to the armholes and sew them on, finished sides in. Ah, it looks so cute already! Now to finish up the upper part of the dress, I just pin together the sleeve and side seams and sew them together. Then I finally take the pretty printed skirt piece and pull in a gathering thread at the very top. I gather it to the length of the bodice waistline and sew both pieces together finished sides in. And here are dress and top united. I was still waiting for some lace to arrive, so I could make the bottom ruffle and did that later off camera. For some more details, I made a little ribbon and sew it onto the center part of the waist. And here's the dress all done. I added some more ribbons and beading to the dress in the end and also decided to add a little lace to the collar as well. As a closure, I added some snap buttons. Since the dress should be very fluffy, I wanted to make a petticoat out of this glittery tool. I just made two ruffles, one double the length of the other, and sewed the long ruffle to the shorter piece. Added a tunnel for the elastic and just have to close the back seam now. After that I can pull in the elastic and sew together the ends. And the petticoat is done! On to the shoes! Lupixi was so sweet and made these beautiful platform Lolita shoes for me. I printed them in pink resin, but decided to paint them in a different shade of pink. I add several layers of pink acrylic paint and ended up with something like this. Then I take some glue and apply it to the platform sole part. Then I take my pink iridescent glitter and glitterify the soles.
I did that to both shoes and then they looked like this. I also printed these little bows and painted them in the same shade as the shoes and just glue them onto the front of the platformers. I also added some ribbons to the shoes and the shoes are done! Lupixi also made some candy for me I could print but sadly not eat. <laughs> Let's paint them real quick. And boom! All painted! I also used some glitter on them that almost looks like sprinkles. Here I already prepared a hair ribbon with a magnet and found this rainbow piece in my decoration box. I decided it would look perfect on the bow so I glued it onto it with some Uhu glue. And then I take some of the candy and add it to the ribbon as well. Last but not least, I found this big star bead I still had from years ago and put it in the center of the bow. And the hair ribbon is done! But that is not everything I made. I also glued one of the cupcakes to an old small hair clip made a little ribbon with a lollipop that I glued onto a self-made hairpin made from some jewelry wire, another ribbon I glued on a hair clip that I glitterified, and another tiny hairpin. Last but not least, she just needs some stockings, which I received from a Yashi doll as well. They are so beautifully made and I love the little detail on the fabric. Thank you Vivi for sending me these. And yeah, we are finally done! I'm absolutely in love with this doll and want to paint more smart dolls in the future. I just need more bodies because I have like three more unpainted heads. And also I really need her dress myself. I love gingham fabrics so much. Thank you Alex, Barb and Diana for collaborating with me and make sure to check out their videos as well. Links are in the description box below. And here she is! How do you like her? I love how she turned out and that this doll project kind of brought me a little bit back into wearing Lolita myself again. Thank you all so much for watching and especially thanks to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers. You make all of this possible. If you like this video make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell notification to not miss out on future videos. Also make sure to follow me on Twitch for some live streams in between videos. I'm streaming every Monday Wednesday and Friday from 3 p.m. CET. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a beautiful creative day. 